Hi everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to read from a MySQL database using Java. This video is going to be broken up into two different parts. The first part is going to be focused on getting the baseline database set up with MySQL. The second part is going to be writing our Java code that actually reads the data out of that database. For this first part, I'm going to assume that you already have a working understanding of the Structured Query Language, or SQL, and also familiarity with tools such as MySQL, which is a relational database management system. And I'll assume that you have access to a MySQL server, and either you can have root access to it, or you know someone who does so that they can set up the database for you that you can read from. Without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so first I am in the Windows command prompt here. And in my case, I'm running the MySQL D, the daemon service, which is running the actual backend server. I'm running that all locally on the same machine. So in my case, I can just access it locally here. Just to demonstrate what that could look like, if I run mysql.exe, and then I want to use the root user, and then I enter in the root password, now I am in the MySQL server. But one of the problems here, if I ask MySQL what the database list is, I don't have a really good database to work with in here. I have kind of just the defaults that normally come with MySQL. So I actually want to quit out of this. What I actually want to do instead is I want to say, hey, MySQL admin, can you create a new database for me? I'm just going to call this demo. Whoops, and I got to specify that I'm giving it a password. So now if I try this again, I log in as the root user. Then now if I show databases, now I can see my demo database right here. So if I say use demo, and then I want to do select database, I can see that my active database right here is the demo database. But now the next problem is there are no tables. It's an empty set. So my database is empty, and what I want to do is I want my Java code to be able to query a table and then return the result of the table. So now what I want to do is I want to create a table called user, and then I'm going to go ahead and make an auto increment ID. So ID, we'll make it an int, not null, auto increment. And then we'll give it a name with up to 30 characters that also can't be null. Then we'll give it an age, which can't be null. And then we'll make sure the primary key of the ID is set. All right, perfect. So now we have a user table within our demo database. Now if I select everything from user, there are no values there. So now what I need to do is I need to do an insert into the user table and I'm only going to add name and age because the ID is auto incremented and I'm going to say values. I'll go ahead and add Bob who will be 35 and then we'll say that Alice is 32 and Marty is 40. All right, so it says that we've inserted the elements. So now if we run the select command again, we can see we have IDs one, two, and three with each of these names and ages as we'd expect. Great. So now basically our database has the data that we're looking for in it, but how do we access it from Java? Well, MySQL, which actually funny how that name came about, MySQL. So MySQL the originator, one of the founders, his daughter, her name was Mai, and then SQL, the structured query language, is the main way that you query the database, hence the name MySQL. So MySQL is written mainly in C and C++, so those don't have bindings to Java directly, so what you need to do is you need to have a connector which connects your Java code to your database. And that's something that isn't typically distributed when you install MySQL. You need to specifically install the connector that you're looking for for the language that you want to connect to. So if I search for MySQL downloads on Google and I click on this first link here. So if you scroll down here a little bit, there is a MySQL community downloads, GPL meaning the general public license. We'll go ahead and just use that for example. 
And you can see over here on the right, there are all these different connectors. So the connector that we want to use today is connector J, which is used for Java. And in my case, when I look at this little dropdown, I would select platform independent. And I'm going to go ahead and download the zip here. And then I don't happen to have an account, so I'm just going to select no thanks, just start my download. So once that's done, what I've already done is I have extracted that zip. And what I did is I put it into my C drive, program files, MySQL. And the MySQL server typically goes within a subdirectory of the MySQL directory within program files if you're on Windows. So I just put the connector at the same level as sibling to the server. If you open up the connector, there's the jar file here. It's important to remember where this jar file is because we're going to need to use it later. All right, so that was step one. We now have a database and we have a connector that allows us to connect our database to our Java code. Now on to step two, which is writing the Java code that actually reads from that database and then gets the information back to us. Let's dive into IntelliJ and write some code. All right, so for today's example, we're gonna use the JDBC API, or the Java Database Connectivity Application Programming Interface. Ugh, okay, that was a bit of a mouthful, but I promise the code will be relatively straightforward to understand, at least I hope so. So to start off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make multiple things that implement auto-closable, meaning that we're gonna use a try with resources statement here. So I'm just going to call this connection and it's going to be a driver manager dot get connection. And now we need to pass in three distinct strings, the URL, the username, and the password. All right, so the driver manager, as you can see, is part of the java.sql package. There are two main packages that the JDBC API primarily uses, the java.sql package and the javax.sql package. All right, the thing that IntelliJ is flagging is that we aren't handling an SQL exception here. So I'm just gonna be a little bit lazy and I'm just gonna say that main could throw an SQL exception. All right, so I mentioned that there are three different parameters that this takes. The URL or the uniform resource locator, a username and password. So we already looked at the username and password when we were connecting to the server via the mysql.exe command. So we'll make a private static final string of user, and it was the root user. And uh, surprise, surprise, you may have guessed it during the tutorial, my password for the root user is also root. Shh, don't tell anyone. And now the third piece is that URL. The first thing we can do is we can identify the host name, which for me is localhost because I am running this locally. And the second thing you wanna do is identify the port. So if I switch back to my running MySQL connection and I just type status, I can see a lot of information here. But the big thing I'm looking for right here is this, the TCP or transmission control protocol port number, 3306. This is the port number that I wanna to connect to when I'm establishing connections. So we'll add in the port number. And then now what we do is we add a slash and we indicate the database that we want to connect to, which is the demo database. Now, if you've read lots of URLs, you know that the first part of the URL is supposed to be the protocol. So you want to use MySQL slash slash, and then we're getting a lot closer now, but you also need to append a JDBC up front. So this is saying the JDBC MySQL protocol, localhost hostname at TCP port 3306, the demo database. This is what we want to connect to within our Java code. And now let's replace these strings with URL, user, and pass. All right, so if I scroll out a little bit here just so we can see a bit more of the code and I run it just to see what it's doing, let's see what it outputs. Oh, uh-oh. So if we scroll up, okay, what happened? So no suitable driver for that URL, okay. So this error can be a little bit difficult to diagnose. A few things that you wanna do, or you wanna make sure that your URL is correct. And you also wanna make sure that you have the connector jar file as a dependency within your project so that it can try to connect to your database. So we didn't explicitly do that already, so let's go ahead and make sure that, that gets done. So on Windows, you can do Shift Control Alt S, and this brings up the project structure view. If we go to modules here, 
Let's go ahead and add the connector jar file. So we want to do jars or directories. And here's the jar file, so I hit OK. And then I'll hit Apply and OK. And now let's try rerunning the code. All right, much better. No errors of any kind, which means that we're probably making the connection as expected. So now that we've successfully made a connection to our demo database, let's make a query. And in this case, one other little note about SQL is that case sensitivity doesn't matter, but in the case of readability, it can sometimes be nice to have the command portions of your SQL statements be all uppercase. It's a bit of a convention that's been around for quite a while. So everything from the user table. So one of the nice things about try with resources is you can encapsulate multiple auto closables. So that's what I'm gonna do here. And I'm gonna say final var statement equals connection dot create statement. And now we have both our connection object and a statement object which can now take our query. So now I can say final var result set equals statement dot execute query. And then I will pass in the query string. So now our result set object in theory should have the result of our query, which is our read of the database from the query statement that we have right here. So what we can do to get the data out of this result set is we can say while result set dot next. So the next method will tell us if there is more data to read from in the result set. So now what I want to do is I want to print out result set dot get Let's do get in one of these top two here. So there's a column index and there is a column label. If I start with the column label version, let's say I wanna get all of their ages. So now if I run the code, lo and behold, we have now read data out of our database. Woohoo! So if you recall, these were the ages of each of the users within the database. So if I want to change this, I could use the get string method and give the name of the column, which is the name column. And now I get all their names. Cool. But there's still one thing I don't really love about this, and that is that I have to know the name of the column that I am filtering on here. Now, one way around this is to use what's called the metadata from the result set. Basically, the metadata gives you a whole lot of additional information, such as the number of columns and some descriptions of the columns, such as their numbers and their names. So one other little interesting thing is that all columns, the number of the column is one based, not zero based. So if we were to write a for loop, looping over all the columns, we have to start at one, which is a little weird. So then we also need to update our typical index to not be less than, but less than or equal to metadata.getColumnCount, and then we'll increment i like we normally do. And now in here, we can do print uh, result set dot get object i plus a extra space character and then after the for loop we'll print a new line so let's run this and see what we get aha looks a lot more familiar doesn't it we get all the columns here and all the rows so we've got the auto incremented id the name and the age for all three of our rows and the nice thing here is that none of this is dependent on prior knowledge of the table we're just printing out the table's contents so one last adjustment I wanna make is I'm gonna move this up here. I'm gonna copy this for loop. It's gonna look pretty similar. And instead of printing out the result set object, I wanna print out metadata dot get column name over i. And then I'll add the new line afterward. And if we rerun the code, we get each of the column names and then we get each of the values within the rows. Cool. And that was a quick tutorial of reading data from a MySQL database using the JDBC API, just scratching the surface of that API. While JDBC can be really powerful in that it gives you low level access to the database, it also comes with drawbacks, such as needing to handle a lot more code and not being able to make it as object oriented friendly. The Java Persistence API fixes some of those issues while abstracting a lot of the details from you. And it actually, multiple JPA providers do add JDBC or something similar under the hood. So at least in my opinion, before you dig into something like JPA, understanding JDBC is pretty useful. If you enjoyed today's video, or if you learned something new, please do smash that like button. 
drop a comment below and or subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a good rest of your day and I hope to see you next time. Take care.